Yeah. All right, this is our official announcement. That we are going team. Whoa, what is going on, legends? Welcome to another news video. 21.4 is behind us. I'm glad to see the back. Your back is broken. Didn't go the way I wanted, but I was still happy. Of that one, some of you, maybe. What a world of hurt that guy was in, eh? I can understand how you can get to that place in this workout though. It's just red line and then you pass the red line and then that was it. Others maybe loved every second of it. Update. 21s wasn't bad. 15 sucks. And the nines are a kick in the face. That was a good one. That is certainly one good way of keeping cool. I don't know what he was thinking doing it out there. Should we have a look at some performances from the week and statistics? I think we should. On the female side of 24.1, to get into the top 10 worldwide, you had to go at 602 or quicker. That 10th place spot held by Kristen Holte, who was actually a retired CrossFitter. So uh, if you uh, got, got beat by a... What are you doing? She's not even full time anymore. Emotional damage. Now, the fastest time worldwide goes to. Small apology if I butcher this. Mijam von Rohor. Even just saying it, I don't think I said it right. Do the roar. Do the roar. Incredible time. 539. <laughs> that took me way longer than I should have. Like, I need to have paid more attention in maths class. But she was doing 31.8 reps a minute on average. It's a lot. And then there's some notable names on the leaderboard that we're going to be looking at this year. Laura Horvath, current reigning champ, finishing a time of 7.03, getting 397th in the world. Wouldn't say this is like a wheelhouse workout for her. Still an incredible time. Current second fittest on earth, Emma Lawson, took 26th in this workout with a time of 6.16. Just topping that is current third fittest on earth, Ariel Lowen, taking 22nd worldwide with a time of 6.12. And then obviously, there are a lot of eyes this year on Tia Claire Toomey, her return season after having a baby. She completed 24.1, 62nd worldwide with a time of 6.30. Now the eagle-eyed of you legends would have seen that Tia Claire Toomey when she was doing her burpees over the dumbbell on her left hand side was doing the burpee on her knuckles. And as of recent there has been photos going around of her wearing a brace on that wrist of which she has addressed. From picking up willow so much my wrist has actually like swelled up a lot and they call it like I don't know how I'm gonna butcher the name so I'm not even going to um she didn't want to butcher it. I've already butchered a name. Let's, uh, this is what it's called. Let's do some learning. In English, it is said as De Quirven. It is often pronounced as De Quirven's Tinosinovitis. De Quirven's Sino Tinosinovitis. Now, this is a French name, and in French, it's not said like this at all. But De Quervin. De Quervin, so you could see. But basically, my wrist is swelling and it's just from constantly picking up willow and they say it tends you tend to find it in like mums or you know parents basically what it is is swelling and inflammation of the tendon under the tendon sheath of kind of the muscles that go up through the thumb wrist area prognosis anywhere up to 12 weeks for a recovery it's kind of like a overuse repetitive strain injury although crossfit does kind of use everything you know i feel like she'll manage it well and it'll be right as rain in no time 
Also, we see the return of the uh, iconic profile picture by Danielle Brandon. She got 74th worldwide with a time of 6.33, but she said on Instagram, this should have been the Dave Castro hint for 24.1. You can imagine what's coming out the other end. Um, doesn't need to be on the screen. It makes a lot more sense than the mushroom. Complete side note, if a dog wore pants, would they wear them like this or like this? I'm going with the right-hand side. I think just the back legs. Although it does make sense the left. <laughs> Hold on. Complete side note. When I find random music from the sites that I use for these vlogs, like sometimes they're actual bangers. Listen to this. Anyway, where was I? Now, out of every single male that competed in the CrossFit Open this time round in this first workout, only 25 of them went six minutes or below. With the fastest time going to Colton Mertens, beating everyone else in the world by over 20 seconds. 21 seconds ahead, 21 seconds, t t t If you know that song, your youth was kind of the same as mine. Beating second place by 21 seconds. So uh, we can all play this speech again, but just think that he's talking about 24.1, because he deserves to say it. I was gonna win this sh either way. I mean, <laughs> these guys couldn't keep the pace, they're all just fighting for second place when they see either of those workouts and I'm in the field. I got the math, math in a lot quicker this time round. Uh, 34.6 reps a minute. That's very fast. Some would say the fastest in the world because it was. Now apparently, Colton Merton's win was the fourth most dominant performance in the history of the CrossFit Open. Statistics brought to you by Brian Friend at Be Friendly Fitness. Now, just looking around the rest of the leaderboard, after doing the live announcement, Jeffrey Adler on his return to try and defend his title this year as fittest man on earth. He went 610 at the announcement, Go. although he did not do the turnaround. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Never mind. And they did not get told to do the turnaround. So they messed up the open announcement for the second year in a row. Remember last year when they didn't put the right weight on? and gave him a three second penalty. So he did this workout in six minutes and 13, 75th worldwide. Looking at the rest of the podium, Patrick Vellner, 601, 27th worldwide, and Roman Krenikov taking 131st worldwide with a time of 622. Other athletes that people are keeping their eye on this season, Ricky Garrard, 33rd worldwide with a time of 602, and two-time fittest man on earth, Justin Medeiros, who is going to be doing point two. The announcement against Colton Mertens finished 24.1, 124th worldwide with a time of 6.21. Now, actually speaking of the live announcement, the ads were so annoying if you're on YouTube. Did, did anyone else get those? Like every five seconds for a long part of it. But a part of it that I thoroughly enjoyed was Tommy Marquez in the background of the live stream, not really knowing what to do with himself. It made me laugh a lot, like a lot, a lot. Like just, like he knows he's on screen, but he doesn't know what to do about it. Like it's, it's good, it's good. Somebody make that into a meme. Moving on, it's always cool to look at the numbers. These statistics that are coming up, I got off the morning chalk up with their collaboration with Barben. As of just after March the 4th deadline, there were 342,373 total registrants, which is a 6% increase compared to 2023. But it's still over 70,000 away from the peak open participation that we saw in 2018. Although over the last couple of years from 2020, you can see there's been a very kind of drastic increase. And so you never know, give it a couple more years, we may surpass that peak year and be on our way to 500,000 competing in the open. That would be cool. In terms of affiliates participating, there were 229 fewer affiliates signed up in 2024 compared to 2023, even though there were more people. And although the most participants this year in the CrossFit Games Open are from the United States of America, 39.5 
0.42% to be exact. There's not a single US affiliate in the top 10 for affiliate participation. A number that I found crazy is that Superforce CrossFit have 612 registered people in the open. Shout out Brazil. If we look at the regions going forward, because obviously we'll have regionals, the region with the most participation is Europe, with over 62,000 men and 44,000 women. And if you're 33 years old, you are in the age group that has the most participation, followed by 32, 34, 31, 35, 30, 36, 29, 37, and 28. When I read these numbers, I was actually a little bit concerned. I'm not gonna lie. Um, if you look at these ages, like I'm in there, Jazz is 33, she's the top age. I don't know if I should have said that. These are all like relatively older. Like we want that younger generation to come through. You know, I would love to see 18, 19, 20, 21 on here. I feel like these ages are from when CrossFit was like at that peak, you know, popularity. Does this scream new people coming to CrossFit? I don't know. It, not really, but maybe. What do you think? What are your thoughts? And now looking forward to 24.2. That's going to be released tonight. There won't be Dave Castro announcing it. There will be Seth Rollins, the uh, WWE champion. Pretty cool. And we've had our clue. Here it is. Great. Let me know what you think it is down in the comments. It could be anything. But anyway, no one's told you today, you're an absolute legend. Thank you Whoop for sponsoring the video. Link in the description below for a free Whoop and a free device. And hey, we got this. The world is a better place with you guys in it. Smash that like button and we'll see you in the next video. It's been a lot of videos this week. Hope you have enjoyed them.